Welcome back guys, we are going racing. It's Crit Club, this is the final week of Crit Club before we move on to another Z monthly race series. This is the Nokio Crit course, I've never ridden it before, I know nothing about it, although having looked at the stats before the race, it's 10 miles, 16.4k, and it's absolutely pancake flat. So it's gonna be a tough one. <clears throat> There's me in the chat, you can see just shouting, giving myself a shout out uh, for the what life. Try and get some more people to come check out these videos. I don't know why, I just find it fun, I enjoy it. And then there's the customary, let's roll as we head off the line. Um, I really enjoyed this race, I thought it was a lot of fun. I will say I have cut it up into certain pieces. We got a, you know the first lap and a half and then we kind of cut the middle out because it's not actually that interesting. It's a dead flat course. There's 90 odd people or 100, 100 riders on this ride which made it for, it's just not particularly exciting. You were never really gonna get a breakaway because uh, there's 60 odd people in the front group and 60 people splitting, trying to split a group. It's, it was always gonna be basically impossible. <laughs> so um, yeah, just didn't really kind of bother even trying, I guess. So that did kind of play a part in the in the race. It's a bit of a, a bit of a shame to finish the series on a dead flat crit course. It just didn't really make for a very exciting race. But nonetheless, we're off the line. We're hitting 250 watts. Um, I have what's the best way to put it? Kind of fallen out of love a little bit with cycling at the moment. So motivation wasn't very high. This is the first time I've jumped into a race for a week. Um, but it definitely got my stoke back, which is good, and I loved it. So I'm in the pride jersey sitting there in the middle, and quick question to you guys, are those white socks too high? Do they cover too much of the lower calf? Um, I'm kind of, you know, you can obviously know that I'm asking because I think that they are, and I'm pretty sure you can adjust the sock height, so I'm going to have to dive in and change that because that looks a little bit high to me now that I'm paying a bit more attention to it. Anyway, the one thing, so this is the start of the course. It's a, there we go, that's the start finish line. Four loops, uh, two point something miles a loop, I guess, uh, because, and I work in old money guys, so I work in miles. This front group was massive. And once I realized that the front group was massive, my decisions around the race were just like, okay. <laughs> Well, there's just no point sitting at the front of it because you can just get carried around. Um, that's the archway. One thing to point out, and I only realized this after doing it the first two laps, is that it's dub double power-ups on a loop. So you have effectively two chances for a power-up on one loop. Uh, four loops, so you basically can get a power-ups. I didn't realize this. It took me a while. I haven't raced this course before. Took me a while to realize it. I kind of on, on lap two, I was like, wait, is that another banner? Do I get a second power up? Turns out you do. This one, it's only a choice of, or your options are only two power ups. Uh, the first being the one that I have at the moment, which increases your efficiency in the draft. And I quite like this one. It lasts a very long time. <laughs> uh, with the changes that Swift have made, this one actually lasts a long time. The second power-up available is the Ghost, which I'm not sure. I'd love to know what you guys think. They've stopped letting you use the Ghost and then initiating a sprint towards the line. You basically can't use it within the last, like, I think it's like 300 meters of a race or 400. It's quite, like, and to me, that kind of was, like, the only point of having a Ghost. Like, yes, you can go on an attack, but... You kind of need people to come with you on an attack, or I certainly do anyway. So a ghost is kind of pointless to me. But I do like the uh, draft power-up. That's quite enjoyable. It took me a while to realize that there were actually two power-ups. So even though we're holding 300 watts at the moment, I did think that this race was kind of soft. And I'm not saying that as someone that thinks they're a good cyclist. I'm saying that as someone that just kind of was able to keep an eye on his heart rate and realize that we weren't really doing the first lap and a half hard enough. We're going to skip forward a se in a second. So there we go. So that just skips out a little bit the first kind of first part of the, the loop. It's not really that interesting. I'm just going to change it up a little bit. 
But it did feel like, and you can see that we're like 100, uh, 200 watts. We're kind of, it, it felt, a lot of these crit races, I've been just like working at my FTP like the entire race. And this lap, first lap and a half just felt kind of like, uh, like it didn't feel like we were working particularly hard and everyone was just kind of waiting for other people to take pulls and it just really wasn't happening. I will point out, I don't know how I did this, look, um, but <laughs> once I did the sprint at the end of the race, and we're only going to call it loosely a sprint because it, it kind of mildly resembled a sprint. I realized I rode this entire thing on my uh, small front ring. I don't know how I did it. I like I I did like a forty minutes on a on the bike before this, and anyway, that's that's my kind of boohoo moment. I don't know how I did that, but I was definitely kind of I guess cross chaining with a small ring, small ring, because yeah, I didn't feel too bad. But anyway, I definitely felt like the watts on this ride wasn't too crazy. You could kind of hide and sit in the middle, and. <clears throat> I'm not, you know, I don't consider myself the kind of cyclist that can that take a race, you know, by the nuts and really kind of knuckle down and, and kind of sit off the front and, and drive the group. But what I can do is, with a little bit of pizzazz and panache, is dive in the chat and give people some uh, some handy advice. I don't do this because I think I'm better than anyone or that, or, or that I think I'm a, a good enough cyclist or anything like that. Simply, the reason I like to cycle on Swift, the reason I love doing these races... <laughs> is because of everyone else doing it. You're there with, you know, there were 65 people in the front group. I think at this point, coming into the start of the second lap, there's probably still 65 people. I'm riding up front. I don't need to be there. I realize this. And I thought, I did kind of think in a couple of points during the race that we might get a, like a bit of a break in the front pack. Um, but then you can see that the wattage, is, the wattage just looked a bit soft. And in a minute, you might see me kind of dive in the chat and throw out a little bit of kind of like, let's let's try and bump it a little bit because my heart rate is fine and the wattage seems, you know, for a, for a race that is meant to be kind of effectively balls to the wall the entire time, I felt like we, we could have given it more. But I love it nonetheless. Uh, but the first two laps were definitely just about like sitting in this ginormous pack. These big packs make it quicker, but they kind of take some of the excitement away because you can't really get dropped off the group. Like there's just, it's too easy to kind of just sit in the the, the melee of it all and kind of enjoy the ride. And, and then every now and again, you end up up front and, you know, it's, it's good for the ego and everyone gets to whiz around at 26 miles an hour, but... In terms of racing, I don't find these massive races, big participation participation numbers on flat courses particularly exciting. But in a second, uh, I'm hoping you'll see me kind of dive into the chat and just kind of try and square everyone away and get everyone to um, pick the pace up slightly because that, uh, that was basically what was happening. But we did kind of pick it up a little bit. Um, this is the part of, this is the backside of the loop, and this is where you can potentially pick up a second power up. At this point, I don't think I knew that. So I think you'll see a few people just use their power ups coming onto the boardwalk. And there's the arch that you can pick a second one up. Um, yeah, so then basically I dive into the chat and say, you know, let's get the set, the, you know, the next two laps. Let's kind of pick them up a bit. Let's push it a little bit harder. Uh, I th I think basically it was a bit it was a bit of a shame that no one dived in the chat and kind of said anything back or came for a bit of a chat. I fully understand it, guys. I get it. Uh, everyone's working away. Not everyone's got their Swift companion on, but um, for my peace of mind and for my enjoyment, it's uh, a lot more fun when a few people at least kind of dive in and say some stuff. We're gonna cut ahead. Basically, dive straight ahead to basically the back end of the um, last lap. We did manage to pick things up after I dived in the chat and said, kind of, let's push it a little bit. The pace really heated up. The nice thing was, was that my heart rate jumps up a ton, which is uh, 
good to know. And I think someone basically said, or I dived in the chat at this point and kind of told everyone that just to make sure that they don't mess up with their ghost towards the finish line, or given that they've now changed it, that you can't use a ghost for the final sprint. You kind of got to use it uh, as an attack before you get to the final sprint. I, d I don't know what everyone's thoughts are on that. I'd love to get people's opinions because personally, I think that was like the one advantage of a ghost is, you know, save it for an attack basically in the, I don't want you know, I don't know how you describe it, but the, that last two, 300 meters before you hit the line, that's the only time it's relevant to me. <laughs> Um, otherwise, I'm just kind of disappearing off people's screens whilst riding next to them. So it's interesting. If anyone's got an opinion on that, uh, let me know. Because <coughs> the reality is, you know, things start hotting up when we're like, um, what is it, like a, a, a mile out, uh, 1.6k out. Someone did dive in the chat and said that, we should really have been cycling at this pace for the entire race. <laughs> and that was like the only thing someone came in and said, which uh, I think it was Steve, someone, Steve Everett, came in and said, yeah, we should have been really kind of hammering it and trying to hold this pace from the get-go. I don't I don't disagree with you, Steve. That's, that's literally the reason I kind of got into the chat and tried to, uh, to say something just to kind of get people moving. Once again, it's a fantastic example of how you can use Swift Companion to just help change the dynamic of the race. And I'm pretty sure that whilst most people uh, might not use the chat, I think they do read it and people respond to it. So just because people aren't replying, uh, you know, they have to read it. They're forced to. It's on the, you know, most people will have it on the side of their screen. So don't be afraid to dive in. I Well, I certainly not. And I'm hoping it doesn't annoy too many people, but it was good. So this is the last lap. And at some stage, everyone's together. It's just a massive group. I think there's about 50 people up front. And it just wasn't a very exciting kind of race. Not too much happens. We never really split. We're always pretty much together. Anytime it strings apart, it pulls back together. Kind of very classic, big group, swift, dynamic style race. Um, but what you will see with one mile to go is this is where the heat comes. So we hit the broadwalk. Uh, a few people will burn off their power-ups. There's me burning off mine before going over the or underneath the last arch. A few other people will burn their draft power-ups. But then you'll see that the um, the wattage kind of kicks up. And there's <laughs> that's a cheeky little... Uh, yeah, don't forget to check out the What Life message on the group. I'm sure everyone's paying attention to that whilst they put in their final punches towards the line. Yeah, the group definitely picks up. I'm towards the back of it and I'm positioned 46th, 43rd. So you can see it's a really big group. Strings out, strong cyclists kind of cycle off the front. Middle cyclists sit in the middle and the guys that don't have anything left in the tank kind of fall towards the back. It's a fairly standard <laughs> standard procedure for a race. Um, there's me just saying, here's the kick, because you can kind of feel, you know, 250, three, uh, 300, 350 watts. You can feel a couple of people using their draft boost to, I'm hoping to kind of stay in the mix. I'm up in 30 seconds. I don't, uh, 30 second place. I do not have a sniff of the lead in this whatsoever. Looks like one rider, if you check the map top right, has completely just gone off and, and hammered it. I did look at Swift uh, Power afterwards to have a look at people's stats and um, it's all fairly standard. It's just not like, as much as I have loved this race series, this to, to finish it on this race just for me wasn't particularly exciting. We're stringing out a bit. As soon as you get off the cobbles, then it's hammer time. It's absolute go time, guys. We're 700 feet from the finish. So push, push, push. This is when I realized it was I was in the small ring on the front and it wasn't going to work for me. Try and stamp on the pedals and I just couldn't do it. I think my bike kind of shifts over. You see me in the corner. Get up to 600 watts and that's about it. It's entirely unexciting. But I think I finished 28th in the race, which I'm pretty happy with. I didn't have a sprint on me. I am... Um, 251 watts, 3.2 watts per kg average for someone that's not been particularly uh, inspired or motivated recently. I was very happy with. I, I'm going to say like I really enjoyed that race. It was nice to dive in on big groups. I'm very much 
looking forward to some smaller races like that aren't part of the Z monthly race series because I find that the dynamic in those is just like way more like engaging and there's just more to play for because you can fall off a group and you've got work to stay on when the numbers are smaller. Uh, but what I did enjoy about the Zwift monthly crit series was the fact that if you get a big race, it's fast, uh, and that kind of made it more of a challenge, basically just holding that threshold for the entire race. But it did mean that come to the sprints at the end, uh, I didn't have any beans left. So that's it, guys. That was a, like, I quite enjoyed it. You might have a quick look at my, here we go, timeline. You can basically just see it's all fairly standard. You can see it's pretty soft in the start and then kind of picks up towards the unit end. And I am not setting any records on my power curve. Right, thanks guys, I will see you on the next one. Thanks for sticking around.